Good day, everyone. Ali Safi here from Safi Financial Network. Today is August 1st, 2024. All right, months of August came up with a very, very sharp price action to the downside. So um, if you just look at S&P 500 daily chart, just the overall view from the chart, nothing um, special you want to consider. This pattern is very, very bearish, folks. So when you just look at this pattern, you will see that a couple of times happening in the chart. So something like this, exactly last year. So this is kind of like a month of August top. We got September, October top. And you see that market just going all the way down to here. Um, and also, um, again, if we just want to see the symmetry with the market, market always like to do the same thing or repeat the same patterns over and over again. So this is kind of like a very nice QM pattern. We just got below this zone and getting below this zone means we are kind of like a broken, very, very important demand area. And this is kind of like a left shoulder and here's the head and July top, which I was warning a lot for the July top. And some people that didn't like it, um, Yesterday, I was warning about like, this is kind of like a knee-jerk reaction from the market. One of the best day in 2024, if, if it was not the best, probably second best, I didn't count it for NASDAQ, it was the best day yesterday in 2024. But that was kind of like a sharp bounce. And when we see a sharp bounce, usually it just fizzles away after uh, a day or two. So... Um, as you see, this bounce fizzled out and it's just uh, going to the downside. We are testing this area again. So potentially for two hours, even four hours, we can get a bounce. But after that, I should say that lots of downside targets are shown here. Specifically, this area would be kind of like interesting level. So if market again goes down below this pivotal point, just imagine if it goes down below 4,200, then there is going to be, let me just take, um, show it to you. So then there is going to be another bigger head and shoulder here. So this is kind of like a scary forks. If it gets below like 5,000, we can see a bounce to 53 and then getting to the downside again to test this area or even sharper sell off to this area. So I should say scary time is coming. Seems like market is just at the beginning of it's a scary time. And uh, we are kind of like a breaking down this uh, bullish trend line to the downside uh, very, very sharply. So I'm not uh, forecasting the market. I'm just uh, telling you if those scenarios occurred in the chart, we should expect more downside price action is coming down the road. So uh, just bear with me. Here is a very, very oversold condition in daily chart, but it is very usual when we get kind of like a bear trend, you're gonna see oversold condition time to time. When you see overbought condition, it's time to sell. On the other hand, uh, when we are in an uptrend, when we are getting overbought condition, we shouldn't pay attention. When we are getting to oversold condition, we should buy. But as you see here, we are kind of like a changing the structure here. We are not sliding on the, uh, overbought condition at all. So we are kind of like a chopping around and market is just shifting a structure to a choppy market as well. So this is kind of like um, S&P 500. Let's zoom on today. Uh, it just uh, closed um, the, it just closed the, all the gains for uh, yesterday price action. It's just going down as well. So S&P uh, went down uh, crazy after yesterday, a nice uh, kind of like a signal to the top. Here is SMA 20, here is the gap, and you will see that the market is just going down uh, today as well. All right, so um, if we just uh, see a weekly chart here, I'm gonna just uh, put a weekly analysis tomorrow for more um, kind of like a comprehensive view. But if you just look at the weekly chart, we are kind of like in a sell signal and we are not even close to oversold condition in a weekly chart that we can get a bounce. So whenever we get here uh, to kind of like a weekly oversold condition, we can see a bounce. But I should say, and we are getting here somewhere around uh, 4,900, 
uh, 5,000, that should be the area that we are looking for a weekly bounce. So right now we are kind of like a far away uh, from that area for at least S&P 500. Moving on to NASDAQ, let me just show you NASDAQ here. NASDAQ daily chart after yesterday's surge to the upside, almost 3%, uh, almost 4% to the upside. We just got into this sell zone. And as I was warning you folks, this is kind of like a sell. And sure enough, so we got into kind of like a very strong sell signal today, just going all the way down, almost um, going down all the way to bottom of this uh, white range bar. After hours that we got earning from Amazon and Apple, and I'm not sure what's going to be for Apple. We'll look at the chart, but Amazon just a uh, fantastic earning amidst the revenue uh, and price just uh, going down after hours. You see that it just kind of impacted NASDAQ as well. If we go to um, hourly chart or four hour chart, I'm going to tell you exactly what's happening. So this is the area that I was looking for, folks. If you remember, if you're following my analysis, I was... Uh, telling you guys that this is the area that I'm looking for sell and market just at the right time, the perfect zone. We just got into a sell signal here, just a one time stop loss, but the rest is just going down crazy. Look at the sharp sell off after that. So it's just going down. I should say I'm looking for a bounce. So right now market is pretty oversold in the short term. And um, like hourly four hours chart, uh, we are just uh, getting into 78%, even less than that Fibonacci retracement with a nice uh, hidden divergence, bullish hidden divergence here in MACD. So when we are getting um, to that zone, we usually see a bounce, but uh, we are in a bearish trend line and we didn't get above um, a higher high. So we are not shifting the structure. I mean, like here's the high, here's the low. High, low, high, low. And this is kind of like a W pattern for bottoming formation, but this high did not manage above this high, which is still a lower high. So I know it's kind of like not a symmetry, but this is a lower high. This is lower high. This is lower high. And this is kind of like a high. So um, I'm expecting kind of like a bounce to here. And then if it does not manage above this important 19,200, uh, then we can see another sell-off is coming to the market. We're going to break down this level and NASDAQ can go to 17,000-ish area. So if we just uh, zoom out here, we'll see that there are lots of support here in hourly chart. And um, if we go to four-hour chart, I'm going to give you a better kind of like understanding that this is a four-hour chart that I just uh, provide analysis yesterday. And here is the area that we were looking for a bounce. Right now, market is just forming a nice bouncing formation for a next tackle. I believe that the next tackle is going to be 19,200. I'm looking for for a momentum because tomorrow is going to be NFP, folks. If NFP job number is weak, that's going to be a great news for the market because that is giving a further reserve green light that we are kind of like a see a rate cut for sure in September. So market will like it and potentially it's going to go higher. I'm just looking for a momentum. If you are getting above this zone, if you are getting above this zone, as I said, any pullback would be a great buying opportunity because that's going to be kind of like a reverse QM pattern. But I think this sharp sell-off is very, very ugly. So any bounce to here, I should say uh, sellers are going to take control again and uh, we're going to go down. So if we go down, uh, we're going to see a 16,000 to 17,000 area, some kind of like a 17,000 to 17,600. That's the area that I'm looking for. So uh, it was kind of like a, um, um, a very neat price action just because we got this ascending head and shoulder here and this pattern fail nicely. So when this pattern fail, lots of buy or, uh, sell orders, they just uh, shifting to the buy orders and create this nice rally. So right now market is just gonna go back to collect some of those orders as well. So this is very, very interesting um, time that we are um, trading NASDAQ because it gives us lots of kind of like a technical reaction to different levels, good swings and a good potential buy and sell opportunity. 
Moving on to Dow, which was kind of like a pretty neat as well. So Dow got into this area. If you remember yesterday, I was saying that I'm not expecting Dow managed to higher high, potentially lower high. Sure enough, we just got it. And we got into SMA 20 again, again, getting back to this level. But this time is weak. Why? Because we didn't manage higher high. We managed a lower high. Potential bounce is going to just like give us another selling opportunity, a sharp drop selling opportunity um, to this area. Uh, moving on to gold, uh, which was kind of like a pause today. But price action is pretty neat. Actually, gold is getting back to um, kind of like a bullish structure, at least for now. It's just coiling, consolidating here nicely. So um, if you just go to a daily chart or a four-hour chart, I'm going to go to daily chart here, uh, showing that gold is just showing a doji bar. A doji bar um, doesn't mean that it's going to be sell. We, we should wait. But if we go to the short-term, uh, time frame like a four hours, uh, one hour. If we get to double top here, we shouldn't surprise. But I believe that gold um, cannot manage to higher high. I, I kind of like a feeling that gold is going to go back with the market when everything is on sale, especially today. Gold miners was, uh, gold miners actually, they were hammered today. So pretty ugly sell-off, broad-based sell-off today, not just technology. Moving on to silver, silver just uh, reversing down. As expected, a silver is getting into this supply area, reacted nicely. If it has a follow through to the downside, I should say this take uh, this is gonna take out this pivotal point. It can go down ultimately to here for a fantastic buying opportunity. So I'm waiting for that one. Just be prudent, be patient with those levels. Don't get to the trade too early. Moving on to crude after yesterday's surge to the upside, crude just to smash down today as well. So uh, to, yesterday was kind of like a knee-jerk reaction to this demand area. We just got a buy signal, but it didn't have a follow-up. So as I said, crude cannot manage it above it. So even if tomorrow or let's say next two, three days um, it gets here, then it can go down easily after that. So we're going to see some kind of like a 61 again to $66 per barrel is coming for crude. I'm just waiting for that one. And again, be patient and be prudent with that one as well. Moving on to um, individual names, starting with Bitcoin. Bitcoin just going down fantastically to this demand area. So look at that, folks. Very, very great price action here. This is the area of 62,000. I was waiting for that. And uh, this is very nicely going 64,000 right now. Uh, we may see some kind of like a bounce, a crazy bounce if it gets to 68 to 70,000. I should say this is kind of like a very nice cup and handle formation. Also, if you just look at the bigger picture, we are kind of like a hitting this trend line a lot. So this is gonna be the sixth time. And the sixth time, I believe that we're gonna just take out this pivot going all the way up to 92,000. So Bitcoin is kind of like interesting for a market. Ethereum, just like going down, uh, again, back to this trend line, uh, reacted nicely to the upside. US uh, bond yield just crashing to the downside. This is telling Federal Reserve, hey, Fed, what are you doing? You need to cut the rate as soon as possible because bond yield is uninverted. And this is a recessionary uh, kind of like a signal for the market overall. Treasury, 50 cents up today, you know, even after hours, it goes higher. It just hit my first target, which is 95 to $97. Treasury right now is at it as um, um, 95.31. And even after hours, it goes to 48, which is fantastic. Treasury goes higher uh, because we have some allocation in our portfolio as well, VIX. 13% up today, fantastic move for VIX. Uh, again, sellers just to control here. As I said, a bounce is coming. Potentially, we're going to see a downfall for VIX uh, tomorrow. But VIX holding up pretty well above 16. So this is kind of like a very interesting level for VIX. As long as it holds above it, uh, we're going to see some kind of like more volatility down the road. And I believe VIX is going to be a good play in August. Um, Moving on to Dixie, Dixie just uh, going inverse uh, of the dollar. Why? Because Dixie, just people liquid, 
their position into cash. It doesn't mean that um, the bond yield is going to go higher just because U.S. dollar demand is getting higher potentially just for stock market and also the other assets going down. Um, magma indicator goes down today as uh, we just got a bloody session. It just gapped up and going down after hours. It took hit more. Apple just uh, going up after hours. So this means earning potentially was good for Apple. So as you see here, I just draw a neckline here for Apple and uh, market today, it's just the Apple uh, got a bounce. So if it holds it, it's okay. But I'm not sure if Apple can manage above this. Even if there is a bounce, whatever earning is, so we can see another potential touch. This is kind of like a nice bear flag just above this neckline. So the breakthrough is gonna just bring the Apple down 198. Moving on to Amazon, just a $2.91 down today. And after hours, it's just a smash to 176. So Amazon is very bearish. So the pattern obviously is very bearish. We are just uh, broking, uh, we are breaking down lots of supports and uh, kind of like demand one after each other. It can go down to 154, 162 down the road, which is gonna be a great buying opportunity. If you ask me, Meta just after fantastic earning yesterday after hours, gapped up. Sellers obviously took the entire session going down, hammered the price, still managed $22 positive, but look at the candle. The candle is very weak. And Microsoft are going down as well after hours. It just took a hit and Microsoft already broken this trend line to the downside, which is very, very obvious. If you just uh, zoom out, you will see that this is a very, very important trend line here. So we just have broken to the downside and uh, I'm kind of like a looking for Microsoft somewhere around um, 384 to 400 at the beginning. But later on, if you see Microsoft uh, middle 300, you shouldn't be surprised at all. Uh, moving on to Google, uh, 78 cents uh, down today after hours, it took a hit. Seems like the next wave of sell-off is coming with these names. It can go down 149. And obviously, it's kind of like a very um, ugly price action. Netflix, uh, $3.50 down today. Even after hours, it just took a hit. Tesla, 6% to the downside. We close our position, put option position with our subscribers. Congratulations, folks. Almost, I should say, 100 something percent uh, profit just in two, three days. Uh, when we got into Tesla, so um, Tesla was somewhere around in this top, and uh, just two days, it just uh, came back down nicely. Um, we just close our positions. If you like our trades uh, or kind of like a see my portfolio, just uh, go to Safi Financial, um, Safi Financial Network. This is the name in Telegram platform. Make sure to go that one. There are lots of free stuff there as well. Moving on to SMH, which is a semiconductor index uh, trade uh, index, uh, trading down today, uh, 231, 6.47% to the downside socks, a $19 down broken trend line already. I believe this is gonna be in blood bass down the road. A Taiwan semiconductor, $7.62 down amd uh, 11 dollar down today as well nvidia seven dollar down remember nvidia was saying yesterday that this is going to be a fantastic selling opportunity 120 to 126 sure enough it just uh, let me zoom in here because this is pretty neat it just shadow guys just top of this shadow hit this important 120 27 and boom after that, just uh, going down after hours, it just gained a bit. I should say, again, any bounce could be a sell until this 76 to 96 area. I'm not going to be buyer for NVIDIA. Moving on to Texas Instrument. Look at that. It just slaughtered after hours even. So it's just uh, going down. Texas, uh, we sold our positions. And we are happy to take profit when it was at the top. Lamb Research, just the slaughter today as well. It's just going down to 822. Right now, it's just holding this area, but I believe that Lamb has more downside to go. Moving on to financials. They just reversed today nicely, double top formation on XLF. So if we broke this 4250, then we're gonna just see another downside to 41. 
potentially I should say 38 to 39 or even lower is coming. The market is in getting into bloodbath. I believe that when I see a different sectors, guys, everything is signaling for a bear reversal. This is KBE, look at that. So it is a rolling kind of like a top and very fantastic confirmation today. Just a 4% to the downside and KRE is coming down as well. So this is gonna be 4.48% to the downside as well. So uh, this is a very, very neat signal for us because 52 is coming, I believe, down the road. JP Morgan, uh, $4.84 down today as well. This is a topping phase. Goldman Sachs, $8.91 down. Bank of America, 81 cents down. And all in all, I should say, Wells Fargo, look at that. So remember, we were talking about this pattern. This pattern is very, very aggressive, bearish, $2 down today as well. Moving on to GDX, which is a gold miner ETF going down 66 cents down. GDXJ, dollar 26 cents down. AEM, dollar 8 cents down. Uh, Newmont, uh, 48 cents up. This is good, actually, while the other... Names are down and Franco Nevada dollar 89 cents down. This sector hold up well, but um, as I said, today was a kind of like a broad based sell off gold barrack as well, going down 27 cents down. Moving on to XLE, which is a uh, energy spider, $2.47 down. XOP, $4.39 down. OH, a $14 down today as well. And uh, Exxon, Dollar sixty four cents down. Chevron seven dollar eighty five cents down. Four percent to the downside. Look at that. So I should say energy is kind of like a week, and um, tomorrow they will announce their earnings as well. So I'm not sure what's going to be the earning, but uh, seems like they are kind of like a looking for a bounce potential for a next sharp sell off to the downside. Tomorrow is going to be NFP, folks. Uh, early morning, so that's going to impact the market a lot. I'm kind of like a looking for. A bounce. A bounce it could be a sell because August is going to be very volatile. September, October, very bearish. So we will see how it goes. Hope you like this video, folks. If you like it, please smash the like button. Share it with the others as well. And have a fantastic evening. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.